Welcome to online classes. Today we'll begin with second part of our sixth chapter, operating systems. In our last video, we discussed about what is operating system, what are the various types of operating systems. Today we will continue with that. As you can see clearly, operating system is a user interface between user and hardware. Different I/O programs, execution, input-output operations, file manipulation, communication, error detection, resource management, and protection. Types of operating system: batch and time sharing. Now we will talk about what is distributed operating system. Distributed system are multiple central processes to serve multiple real-time application and multiple users. There are various data processing jobs that are distributed among the processors accordingly means the central processors are at multiple places and their jobs and it serves a real-time applications and multiple users at the same time the processors communicate with one another through various communications lines such as high-speed buses or telephone lines telephone line or high-speed buses in other words network lines any computer who is able to communicate with another computer can serve as a distributed system they can share real-time memory they can share real-time processes they can have multiple users at the same time These are referred as loosely coupled systems or distributed systems. Processors in a distributed system may vary in size and function. Always remember, these processors are referred as sites, nodes, computers and so on. So another name of a computer on a different location, it can be a node. You can say that node is not working, simply means that computer is not working. Advantages of distributed systems, they can share resource facility with one another, speed up the exchange of data with one another via email. If one site fails in distributed system, the remaining site can potentially continue operating. Now, this is the most important point. In a distributed system, the data is not stored at one proper place. All the users are working at the same file. And if one system has a failure, it doesn't mean the whole system fails. Only that computer is, has stopped working but others are still working properly better service to customers reduction of load on the host computer so the main computer does not work that hard the workload has reduced reduction of delays in data processing see over the network sometimes what happens is data relays are not properly working so that reduces the well network operating system a network operating system runs on a server and provides a server capability to manage data users groups security applications and other networking functions so in a network operating system, there is a main server or main computer that controls everything. That tell what kind of users, what kind of data and what kind of security should be there on each and every computer that is in network with that with that computer. 
The primary purpose of the network operating system is to allow shared file and printer access among multiple computers in a network. Typically, LAN, local area network. We talked about local area network, a network which is connected locally. It can be a private school, it can be a private building, and so on. But on a one geographical location. Examples of network operating system include Windows Server 2003, Windows Server 2008, Unix, Linux, Mac OS X, Novel, Netware, and BDS. These operating systems were designed specifically for networks to control and share files. The advantages they are centralized and stable so what does that centralized means all the data has to go through a server there is no error in handling data between users security is server managed server is managing each and every data security so no failure in data Upgrades to new technologies and hardwares can be easily integrated into the system. Let's just say new technology, new hardware, new hard drive or your hard drive is full, something got damaged. In these kind of systems, it is easier to upgrade or change any kind of hardware. Remote access to server is possible from different locations and types of system. This statement is suggesting you don't have to be present physically at your system. You just need access codes to access all the data on the server and then that server can relay that information to all the networks connected to it. Disadvantages It's costly. You have to make a system when a server it is really costly. Dependency on central location for most operation. All the data, like I said, is dependent on the server. What if data connection is lost from the server or the server is having any problem, hardware or software failure? So all the clients, client system will fail as well or stop working for some time. Regular maintenance and updates are required. You have a smart device in your hand, a client, a smartphone in your hand, right? You're accessing that information overall. But what happens when you have an upgrade on your phone? Your apps in your phone are needs updation. And you don't want to update because you don't you are short on memory. So those updates that you don't do are lack of security for updated network access. And sometimes happens is those bugs can create little bit of information leak. That is why server specifically needs regular software and maintain maintenance updates real-time operating systems the real-time system is defined as data processing system in which time interval required to process and respond to inputs is so small that it controls the environment real-time it means Something is happening live at the same time at the same moment For example, you video chat Across the globe that is real time you watching a match on a TV screen in a real time The time taken by the system to respond to an input and display of required updated information is termed as response response time so a difference between when the user puts something into the system 
or give a command and the time it took to get the information to the user on it or the results that is response time you are saying hello over the phone on a video call and if it's taking 5 seconds or 6 seconds or 6 milliseconds that is the response time to for another user the response time is very less as compared to online processing So, in these kind of networks, real-time operating systems, they are not connected over the internet. They are connected personally, with their dedicated line. So, the response time is even much higher. Real-time systems are used when there are rigid time requirements. Time for a task is very important when you are working on something and the time is very important such as any science experiment or factory machines if the time goes from one second to two seconds the machines are not going to collaborate with each other and the product is going to be destroyed so they will be there will be constraints for example medical imaging any x-ray CT machine or MRI machine industrial control systems weapon systems robots air traffic control system they are all time managed just imagine if the time delay got to from one second to two second or three second or even five second that will jeopardize the system the response time and everything will be in chaos. Difference between DOS and Windows operating system. What is DOS? DOS simply means Disk Operating System. It is a product of Microsoft Corporation released in 1981 and it comes as part a parcel with Microsoft Windows operating system. Now we have studied the generations of computer from generation 1, generation 2. This was the part when Microsoft used command line to control the system. In 1981 they generated a software or a system operating system that can control the hardware line by line user can input data or characters into the system and it will display result on the screen it was 1981 but as the technology improved in 1985 DOS or Windows system got interlaced if you press start Control R CMD This is command based DOS system Still works in a Windows environment You can if you want to go out of the directory You just have to press CD And if you want to enter a directory Or if you want to open a file or a folder You have to press You have to check DIR this is the information that's in there in this folder so you want to enter into a directory hcl this is how you did it now you can exit this mode just by pressing exit this was the dos prompt or command line prompt which still exists in windows now let's talk about windows the system operating system that we use more most commonly used system in computers today windows is a series of most popular operating system developed by microsoft for use on personal computers first edition that runs on windows ms dos 5.0 
was released in 1985. Now what happened was usually system started with DOS and, but in 1985 you can command you can input uh, you can open a window page through Explorer there was Explorer that opened in 1985 it was 16-bit operating system but when Windows 95 came in it changed everything system all of a sudden system started with Windows itself and if the user wanted to go to the command prompt or the command line they can go through command by opening DOS prompt from the windows like we did earlier on since then everything is changing the technology is getting updated softwares are getting updated but Microsoft is still releasing windows from 1985 most popular windows was windows 98 that included everything then windows 2000 professionals windows xp windows vista windows 7 8 and windows 10 now let's continue and talk about what is the what are the main differences between dos operating system and windows DOS is a single user system like we have talked about it is a command line a user can input one command at a time so it's a single user only one user can input but in windows there are you, there can be different user accounts any user can work on different files at a different time but they can be multiple users single task DOS can have only one task or run one task at a time but in windows we can run multiple tasks at a time we can listen to music work on a file etc DOS is not time sharing again because of the command line only few users can have that kind of trade but in windows it's easier for time sharing input device keyboard in DOS so command line no audio file user can input through a keyboard using characters CUI interface but in windows input devices can be mouse scanner keyboard etc and output devices can be speaker monitor so monitor is both output devices for DOS and windows but there in windows we can use different kind of screens as well it uses graphical user interface linux linux is one of the popular version of unix operating system it is open source as its code is freely available unlike windows that the code that we cannot change Linux operating system or Unix operating system is freely available that availability of this code made it it's popular user can download the code or get a ISO file of this code and can update or code its own version of windows or unix or linux operating system open source means the code is open linux was designed considering unix capability its function list is quite similar to unix what are the basic features of these windows portable it can be taken from one machine to another open source is free available multi user like windows many users can work on it multi programming linux is multi programming system the file system is in hierarchy 
it means files and directories are arranged in tree structure form shell shell in, in linux is a special interpreter program which can be used to execute commands of the operating system it can be used to do various type of operations for call application programs etc security Linux provides user security using authentication features like password protection, controlled access to specific files and encrypting the data, putting passwords. Now what is architecture? Look at this diagram. This picture is clearly showing reach of different levels. Hardware is in the inner circle. What does that mean? Hardware is the end part where a user from the outside is accessing the information. Hardware is communicating with kernels and kernels are commu communicating with shell, the command line and shell is communicating with all the applications, compilers, input output etc. Let's discuss them in detail. Hardware layer Hardware consists of all the peripheral devices called RAM, hard, hard disk, etc. Everything that is physically there, that is hardware. Kernels. It is the core component of operating system. Interacts directly with hardware. Provides low level services to upper layer components. Means the services from the upper layer are getting translated here. Shell. It is interface to kernel, the most important part. Hiding complex complexity of kernel functions from users. So it directly means that the complex kernel information is getting hit from users and all the information is getting converted to users back. The shell takes commands from the user and execute kernel functions. Now we we'll talk about computer security the most important part. Why is security important? Because all the information, all your personal information, pictures, photographs and work related data is important. Computer security is a process of preventing and detecting unauthorized use of our computer. Our computer, our information is not public. Always remember that. Be careful when you share any kind of information online or share your computer's password with someone else. Because if these measures cannot be handled properly, unauthorized users, we call them hackers as well, they can access your information, they can put a bug that is a small program or a patch into your system that can steal your data or can manipulate your data. Now your question is, why is it important? your data, your pictures. Most of you will say anybody can look into our pictures. I don't mind. But there are some personal picture, your family pictures that can be misused online. Anybody can morph or modify those pictures. So sharing information online is also harmful. You are sharing your personal data, your name, your father's name, where you live. An online fraud can take place by accessing or giving that information. Your information can be put into any company's or any bank's name and your account can be opened. Any kind of information that you possess is important. Always remember that. Our computers have become an extension of everything we do from banking and investing to shopping and communicating with other through email or chat. Most of us have banking apps on our phone. Now, 
what hackers do they send you an link on a, speci a special festival or special occasion it will say is op click on this link and you will s get surprise or you will get a special gift for you special gift is waiting for you and most of us click on that link the page that opens will show only a beautiful page or beautiful uh, gift or a picture for you a graphic but what the other patch is for the patch hidden patch that will be installed into your system now most of the time what happens is that patch is accessing your information in real time because all of us are connected ev on every second basically saying whatever whatever is happening on your phone when you turned it on or installed it clicked on the link is can be seen or mirror image can be seen on another phone somewhere you are accessing a net banking app you are putting on a password that same password can be seen on another computer you are putting on an email you are putting on a picture you are putting on a password to something your email information and lot of time what happens is the hackers are stealing your bank information and withdrawing money from your account leaving your account empty and just consider about top secret missions scientific missions this is where security comes in read it thoroughly latest anti virus software Now, what is a virus when we speak about virus it is a non living or a living organism that replicates or destroys its host while replicating in computer terms a virus is a patch a program set that is installed or can be downloaded onto your system it will then start multiplying destroying every file in your system that is why we use antivirus software as patch a computer program that will stop that program from executing in new viruses and threats are being discovered every day so we need to update antiviruses every day anti spyware software now we talked about spyware what is spying means spying means when somebody is looking at your information who is not authorized to use it antivirus software alone is not enough to be secure from internet security threats we also need anti spyware software spyware programs are diff different from viruses in a way that unlike viruses it does not alter the way which our machine works or corrupt our data imagine a spyware software got installed into your system a user won't even feel a difference because it's not going to do anything it's just going to send your information to another computer in a secret way in the background your password your credit card information everything that is why we need anti spyware software password protection it is also provided by operating system passwords are the most important aspect of various online accounts your online accounts your local file data everything needs protection so always keep your password secure never keep same password for different accounts never keep passwords that can be guessed or password relating to a personal persons like telephone number date of birth etc always remember always access website related to our password directly by opening a new web page not through a link apply latest updated and patch patches so you need to update any every application every software through a patch a patch is a set of instructions a set of programs that can be re 
bound or attached to already installed app these are always security updates to help users to prevent data theft firewall it is kind of wall or something that holds attackers or hackers firewall blocks traffic not authorized to access our pc the users who are not authorized to use our pc are blocked by firewall points to remember an operating system is a program that acts as an interface between the user and computer hardware operating systems handle many kinds of activities from user programs to system programs like print printer spoolers name servers etc a file represents a collection of related information okay computers can store files on disk hard drive etc time sharing is a technique which enables many people location located at various terminals to use a particular computer system at the same time this is important real time systems are used when there are are rigid time requirements very important linux is one of the popular version of unix operating systems it is open source and freely available computer security is the process of preventing and detecting unauthorized use of our computer now with these points this chapter is complete this chapter is important to, for your understanding because you are carrying a live operating system within you within your pockets and what is happening your protection and your security depends on it thank you